May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet. Uh, whether you're here in the sanctuary with us, glad to see your faces, or if you are online this morning, um, envisioning uh, where my voice is finding you today. And um, thank you to Laura Harding, moon shadows on the mountains. What a way to begin. Um, I do want to say, if you, um, if a listening device would help you during worship, we have those at the welcome counter. We did some technical upgrades to those, um, so please know those are available for you now, and we'd love to be able to assist you uh, with those as well. This fall, um, the story unfolds, and so uh, we have scripture throughout the whole Bible that speaks to this world that we live in and where God is, especially in those times where, what is next, God? Uh, we've been away from each other for quite a long time now and are asking these questions, what is next for us at Mount Olivet? What's next for you in your life of faith? And so today, tiny little verses from the Gospel of Luke, it comes from a larger narrative of Jesus called the Sermon on the Plain, when people gather around and he begins to tell them what the kingdom of God is like. And so we'll dwell in that today. So I'm grateful you are with us in whatever way uh, you are today. And I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together. We gather in the name of the creator, redeemer, and author of life. In this time of uncertainty, we gather together to confess our sin. We'll take a moment now in quiet for your own confession. God of grace, we come to you speaking for ourselves and as a community, naming what is demanding in this world and heavy on our hearts. We wound and have wounds. We speak more than we listen. We rush to judgment without hearing another story. We lead with force rather than compassion. 
we take for ourselves rather than sharing what we have been given. Forgive us and restore us, trusting that your story of love for the world continues to be written. God's mercy is immeasurable. There is always more than enough. In life, in death, and throughout our journey, God is with us. Hear today what God has already given to you. Forgiveness, love, and a place in God's story, all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. The peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. We pray together, all present God, help us see beyond our perceived limits of your love and mercy to compassionately act, knowing your kingdom is already among us. Show us through Jesus what it means to give without measure. May your abundance be poured into the laps of all people. Amen. Thanks for reading today, Kelly. The gospel this morning is from the sixth chapter of Luke. Jesus said, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, 
and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> God's grace, God's peace and love to you today. Amen. Three verses is all we get. Be merciful. Do not judge. Do not condemn, forgive, and give. So let's just sit there a minute. Where do you show mercy? That word's a little bit tricky sometimes. Where do you show compassion? Where do you show humanity? Who have you forgiven? Where have you judged people, not just with the words, but also in what doesn't get said in your thoughts? Who have you criticized? And where have you truly given, not out of obligation, but where have you given because you can and not expected anything in return. Jesus says, the measure you give is the measure you give back, or you get back. So how is your score? Me too. Not so great. The measure you give is the measure you get back. But what happens when this isn't true? When you have forgiven, but that forgiveness has not come back to you? What happens when you give beyond what you can, but you don't get back what you need? I spent most of last week with about 30 other pastors of this ELCA through a grant we are learning from each other how to leave in evolving complex congregations and communities. We meet as a large group four times over two years and then in smaller groups monthly. My group includes me and three female black pastors. One of them is a mother of five boys and she was able to share with us the agony she feels as they grow up and as she says goodbye to them each day, not knowing for certain if her boys will make it through the day unharmed. She spoke truth as she told us that we as white people are not burdened with that same weight every day. I listened to her and I thought, that is true. I know what it feels like to worry about my kids, but I don't each day fear for their life because of the color of their skin. I don't bear that burden like Michelle does. And so I listened deeply to her. And I realized I need to feel in my belly like she does in, 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 to continue the essential work to dismantle the racism that holds this country and holds institutions like the church. And it begins by realizing I have to receive her story and the story of others in its fullest, what she endures each day and look honestly at how that same suffering has missed me 
Where am I called to be more aware of another's burden, not to forget that she holds that, and the world is not okay because Michelle and others are not okay. I think of my colleague and friend as I hear these words of Jesus, be merciful, forgive, do not judge, and give. How are we to do this? Racism, gender equality, inclusion of our LGBTQ friends, poverty, climate change, mental health crisis, domestic abuse, healthcare challenges, hunger, housing, caring for aging parents, and add the trauma of the pandemic to all this, divisions of opinions just about everywhere, the weariness of a virus that's killing us physically, emotionally, and communally. How can what we do make a difference? How can we make progress when it feels like we can't even have conversations about such thing? When people now even in our family make our blood boil with dissension. Three verses is all we get today. But Jesus doesn't leave us with nothing. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure that you give back. The image, I think, comes from an ancient merchant scooping grain for purchase, squeezing and squishing as much as a cup would hold, and even so much that the grain spills over, so much that you have to catch it in the cloak that you are wearing like an apron. We don't so much buy grain like that, but we do buy cookies. Last time I preached on this text two years ago, this image came to me, and I still can't get it out of my mind. In fact, my daughter took a little video for me when she went to the fair this year. cone of cookies overflowing. I loved when they squished the gooey goodness down just to hold one more. I don't know of anyone who hasn't had enough of Sweet Martha's cookies. In fact, they're scattered on the ground like a carpet near its booth. And I'm sure if you ask them for one more, they would say yes. This is the world that God envisions and promises. This is the kingdom of God. When we do the things, attempt the things that Jesus speaks of, to extend mercy, when we listen instead of judging or crit criticizing, when we forgive and when we give, we get back more than we can imagine. And then the world is holding all this beauty and possibility in love like it's suspended even in the air we breathe. Now, on our own, individually, we cannot invoke this potential. But when God enters in, the Spirit of God comes along, magnifying and increasing and collaborating and opening possibilities, joining our individual offerings to each other. And that spirit doesn't just use divine agency. She takes delight in taking our attempts, 
our feelings and our learnings, our small acts and our prayers and our offerings to create a way that no measuring cups are required. Cookies and seeds of grain, mercy, love, and forgiveness spill over for the next person to simply receive it. In a short time, I will ask you, and we will ask you as a community, we will ask each other to commit our financial gifts to Mount Olivet for this next year. We're not funding a budget, we are funding a future. A future that holds so many needs, and it also holds so much opportunity and goodness. God is specifically calling us, Mount Olivet, to both give and to receive, to respond in a way that we uniquely can respond, and also to receive, to nourish the places that we need to nourish ourselves. We are a community, we are a church because we need each other and we need what each one of you brings. Not only the financial investment, but your passion, your interest. What are you called to? What is that deep need in your heart and what is the deep need in the heart of your neighbor? I hear your prayers each week. I hear what you are holding as parents, as neighbors, as classmates, as global citizens. You have both a deep need to give and a deep need to receive. But Jesus is telling us today that because of Jesus, the kingdom of God is already here. So something happens when we dare to try, when we give beyond what we think we can, when we don't close ourselves off, but actually open ourselves up to say that love, forgiveness, and goodness can reach beyond the limits that we perceive. What comes back to us is way more that can be measured. In fact, it's so much it needs to be poured into your lap. And it will be poured into the lap of your neighbor, into the lap of the world that God loves so much. Just imagine, what does the lap of the world look like? Holding everything, every person, every creature, everything of this world. I close by reading the words of Jesus again because they hold for you and for me both an invitation and a promise. What is God inviting you to? And then what is God promising you? Jesus' words, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give back. Please stand as we sing.
As God's story of love and mercy and forgiveness and abundance are proclaimed and sung, we confess our faith, the faith of the church, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Um, we are at the time of the service that we both share the peace and we also offer our offering. Um, kids, there's a basket up front. All your coins and your dollars go to our hunger ministries to feed people. And I'm always overwhelmed at the generosity of kids and the joy in their giving for all the ways that you continue to invest in the vision and mission of Mount Olivet to fund our future, to fund the now and the not yet. 
thank you for that. And um, just in a minute, we'll share the piece. And Bob, I was told that you're going to share a grateful story today. So I invite you to come up. Each week we share a person or things going on at Mount Olivet that we're grateful for. And on behalf of the staff and the church council, today the person we're talking about is our dear Pastor Beth. We are so grateful for many things, and this won't be a complete list, but hopefully it summarizes some of what we're grateful for. Your presence provides stability, strength, and calm in this confusing world. Your caring nature, you're approachable. You listen to our cares. You, you hold our cares within you. Your trusting nature, you remind us to trust in the spirit, especially during these troubled times. Your guidance, planting seeds, giving us hope, you are very good at sensing where those seeds should be placed in fertile soil so they're not wasted. You're open to change. You challenge us to change in this changing world and not hold on to what we want but what we need. You inspire us. You continually ask, what next? Where does God want us to be? And that through the years, it's clear that your guidance has been very valuable. You've challenged us during this last year or two to face racial inequity in our society. You said it again today. That's a painful topic, not an easy topic to look at, but you challenge us to do that. Through all this, you give us hope. I come each Sunday with my cares, my concerns, and I'm sure I'm speaking for all of you. I leave here with hope. And that's a credit to you. So we're so grateful for you. We thank you. There's uh, flowers up here for you. And I would like to ask all of you to give our how we are so grateful. that. Uh, thank you, Bob, so much. Thank you all so much. And now I invite you to stand. May the peace of God be with us all. Let's share a sign of God's peace um, here in the sanctuary. And then for you, for those of you online, for you to name those in the comment as we share that as community.
My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. When I call them, they follow me. I will lead them to rest by the restful streams. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Walk in the light of life. All who follow my word shall have life indeed. Wow, thank you, choir. And that's um, Ian Hazeltine. Ian um, not only is an amazing singer, he's also on staff in marketing and communication. So bring it, Ian. Thank you for being here. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As a community gathered together, once again, we um, pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. You are all invited. You have a place at God's table. And I think we need to declare the kingdom of God is here. It's not all done. There's a lot to do, but it is here. And that means that God chooses in this deep mercy and forgiveness and compassion and love that God has for each one of us in the world to feed us and nourish us. And the story is always that a little bit is what it takes. God breathes into that to create more. And so today, a little piece of bread, a little tiny cracker in a plastic cup with a wrapper and a little sip of wine or juice. And that is God in the world, in humanity, taking what each of us gives and creating more than we can imagine. And so may that image for you to be able to give and then receive back beyond what you can imagine. That's what God's about, and that's what he calls us to each and every day for the sake of another. And now may the body of Christ be given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And um, so now we pray. Uh, we um, are forgiven. Uh, we've received, again, the promise of God's story and God's word, and we have been fed. And um, I'm taken today that at the end of every prayer petition, we say, God, in your mercy, God, in your humanity, in your compassion, that's how we end, and that's how we ask for God's presence in this world. Our prayers matter. Um, they name the unfinishedness of this world and the rough edges, and also the places of joy where we see that, even if it's a glimpse for a moment, and we name that together. And we need both of those things uh, to be able to continue our walk. So um, I'll start us off, and then um, I invite you, if you're online, to name the prayers that you have in the comments on Facebook and for us here um, at church, uh, for you to name the prayers that you have, just raise your hand and I will walk to you um, and speak your prayer today. So let's pray. Uh, good and gracious God, um, for this unfolding story and how your gospel 
is spoken um, as we kind of make our way in a world that's uh, quite uneven. And um, God, for this message today, that you ask us to do these things, not to judge or criticize, to be merciful, to forgive, and to give, knowing that what we give is also what we receive back. And yet, in our human framework, that doesn't make sense. We fall short. We realize what we're lacking. But you take that attempt, that possibility, that small act of prayer, and you breathe into that to create beyond. And so, God, we pray today for a world where there is enough for everyone so much that it gets spilled into our laps that we can barely hold on to it because it is so great. God, for all these things, God, in your mercy. Our prayer. Um, John, um, prayers for you today. Uh, flowers on the altar are for Mana, remembering um, the anniversary of her death. And John, for your walk since then, for you and your family, for how you keep Mana's love in this world. Um, for the compassion and love that she had as a wife and as a mother and as a friend and as a community member. We remember with you today, God, in your mercy. Our prayer. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to pull this up online and see what prayers we have today. Sarah, prayers for my friend Andrea, who is dealing with different health issues. May she feel God's love and healing in her body, mind, and spirit. So Sarah, we join with you. Um, prayers for uh, your friend Andrea um, in all that she's experiencing. Um, it sounds like a lot and too much. And um, may we speak exactly the words that, she, that you wrote here. Uh, for Andrea to feel God's love and healing in her body, mind, and spirit. God, let it be so. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, John. Yeah, John's prayers for people who are verbally and physically, emotionally abused and how that abuse enters into their bodies, that is an illness. And um, for us to receive that story, that need in the world as a burden to us um, until there can be healing and wholeness for people in those abusive situations who are suffering, for those people who are called to advocate and respond and care for families, for children. God, in your mercy. Oh, yeah, Deb. Uh, Deb is speaking a prayer for caregiving in so many different ways. Um, this is a prayer that comes up every week specifically for you all. Uh, caring for parents, um, the crisis of transition to go from living independently to more care, the cost of that, um, the staffing crisis right now for caregivers around, um, for not to be able to... Um, to provide for the needs, for the needing of others along that, and to navigate all of that, uh, for the care of people as they care for others, um, and for what that feels like, both um, especially when you're caring in many different ways, holding that. Um, may we just be aware of what we're walking in. Um, my prayer for Mount Olivet is to be able to create structures of resources within the community to guide us and to uh, accompany us during that time that we don't do this alone, that we need each other. God, in your mercy. Yes. Yes. 
your surgery. Um, prayers, God, is that coming up this week? Okay, prayers uh, for successful surgery and for healing. Um, the prayers um, of a family for a mother and caregiver. In all the ways that that comes, may you feel that peace and strength uh, for all of those who will um, be there to care and love you. God, in your mercy. Lola, uh, your prayer online prayers for my friend Stephanie, whose mother has had a massive heart attack and not doing well. Uh, Lola, praying with you for your friend Stephanie and for her mom, um, uh, for her heart, for the healing of her heart, for the healing of her body. Um, we pray these things, God, in your mercy. Uh, Sue Leland, I have a sense that you are online. Uh, Sue had extensive back surgery this week, is out of the hospital but now in transitional care. No cartwheels yet, Sue. Um, slow and steady progress for you and for you to know that um, all of us at Mount Olivet have you on our hearts and um, are thinking of you for your dear family too as they care for you and all those at St. Therese who are doing just that. And then ongoing prayer is Dan and Christy Coffin. Um, Dan is moving to a more specialized hospice center um, in this next day and as da Dan continues um, with brain cancer and for Christy and Dan um, being more separated than together these days. Uh, for this sacred space, God, uh, between this world and the next, and for that love to be made, made known so beautifully in a human form right now, and for your divine love to be there as well. God, in your mercy. And I pray. Uh, God, for all the prayers that we've prayed today, um, to speak that as a community, to be community together, and for this mercy um, that you invite us into. Uh, may it be so. Amen. Uh, uh, some announcements today. Um, as you know, we're taking the posture of listening this fall. And uh, we have a panel of Mount Olivet members who are involved in our feeding ministries. Feeding is, is one of the ways that we show up and respond in community. They're going to talk about those stories of impact. So, um, Meals on Wheels, um, that's a part of Seep Now and Second Harvest and our Loaves and Fishes community meal and um, Prism Ministry, all those different ways. Um, I really invite you to hear the difference this community is making in that. Um, not only is it the work, it's the people who are called to show up in that way. So I think it's really honoring of them and their stories for us to be able to receive that together as a community and just really celebrate that, give thanks for God, um, just that, that it keeps rippling out, it keeps happening, and for those organizations as well. Um, we are having a diaper drive, and we do this in partnership with the Mount Olivet Child Learning Center downstairs, and so there's a little pack and play out there. You can order diapers online to give, or you can give. That's one of the ways that we respond to the daily needs of this community and to help families in the midst of that with young children. And then um, All Saints Sunday is coming up on November 7th, and we started a new tradition last year, and we actually have um, a space for Mount Olivet members who have died over this last year for us to be able to do a walk if you, as a family, participated in that last year because you had someone who has died, you know how especially meaningful it is to see names and pictures and mementos. And we will walk from this main church over to the chapel where we will have an outdoor service. Um, our cemetery is one of our greatest gifts here and the opportunity just to walk among the saints among us who have been buried there, but also really hold in our hearts those saints um, in our lives who have gone before them, it makes a difference that you show up, even if you didn't have someone die this year, to show someone else that you are walking. Um, so honoring, so beautiful, and we have the space to do that. That's 4.30 on Sunday, uh, November 7th. And then lastly, um, so grateful for voices among us who are coming to share the pulpit. Next Sunday, Pastor Bradley Schmeling, who is a senior pastor at Gloria Day, 
in St. Paul, um, he is one of the best preachers, I think, in the metro area. And Bradley said yes to us, so he will be here um, to preach next Sunday. And so I look forward to having you meet Pastor Bradley. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your commitment to Mount Olivet. If you're visiting today, I hope you got a glimpse of who we are as a community. And um, here, once again, um, that God's, God's kingdom is here. We need to hear that over and over. So I invite you to stand now as we close together in song. and nourished, joyful and free. Be blessed by God who finds you in the wilderness, by Jesus who listens and forgives, by the Spirit creating a way. Amen. Go in peace. The story unfolds. Come and see. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.